Apple left Siri in the dust years ago. They haven't really done much with it in a while. But now they've recently come out with this thing called shortcuts or Siri shortcuts, which you can use to help program your phone so you can interact with it more and do more with your phone. I guess that's what the whole point of this was. But the real question is, can this shortcut, can this Siri shortcut type of thing, can this make up for the shortcomings when it matched up against things like the Google Assistant and Alexa? I haven't used Alexa personally, so I don't know how good or how bad it is, but I do know I'm very impressed with my Google Assistant. I use it on just about all my devices. I even use it on my iPhone. When you do something on your phone, you start here and you end here. But with a shortcut, you start here and you end here. You can achieve the same thing much quicker as if you took the long way. That's what shortcuts are designed to help you do, I guess. I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. I've been playing with these, I've been using them, and I'm not sold out on them 100%. I don't know if these are good or if it's bad, or if this is Apple's lazy answer to compete with the Google Assistant and Alexa. It's kind of what I think it is. They were like, well, we're not gonna revamp Siri because we don't, and we gotta compete, we gotta give the people something, and this is what they decided to give us shortcuts so let me dig in let me show you some settings some things i found i want to share with you and i'll let you guys decide whether or not this is worth it there are two main things that you need to know about shortcuts there's two different locations right come over here you first have to download the shortcuts app onto your phone if you don't have it already you go gotta go ahead and get it now or you're not going to be able to play with these but it starts off with uh the library and then over here to the gallery now both of these play two different functions a library is an it's, it's what it is, is a collection of your shortcuts put together in one location. And I'm gonna show you a quick tip on accessing those super quick so you don't even have to access the shortcuts app in order to get your shortcuts and you don't even have to use Siri in order to access them as well. The gallery is where Apple or maybe even other people who have created other shortcuts and they've been published, they go there. So it's basically saying, hey, we found a cool way and a cool shortcut of doing something. We programmed it and we're gonna put it here and all you have to do is add it to your library and it will work easy peasy, super smooth and easy, just like Apple is known for. So let's go ahead and just take a look at a few things that I've already found that I just wanna show you to give you an idea of exactly what it is that shortcuts do. The first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go over to the gallery and we're gonna look for T, we're just gonna put in T-E-A and I know what you guys are all thinking, is that a Google keyboard on your iPhone? And the answer is yes, that is a Google keyboard on my iPhone. Get over it. I like swipe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do a tea timer. And I liked this app because, sorry, the shortcut, because it was pretty cool. So we have a little timer and we're going to hit get shortcuts. Boom, added. Go over to our library. Let me show you a quick way of accessing it. So you go ahead, swipe up home screen, and I'm gonna go over and look at my widgets now. Swipe right over. If your shortcuts aren't there, all you gotta do is swipe to the bottom, go to the very bottom, hit edit, and click on and change your shortcuts. And you can move your shortcuts any way that you want. It doesn't really matter. Arrange your widgets any way that you need them to be. I have my shortcut widget at the very top. So I'm gonna come over here and just click on T timer. As you can see, I get a whole bunch of options. Different T's require different steeping times. So that makes sense. We're gonna go ahead and do a good old uh, a green T. So that timer is set and it's currently going and then it will go off and let us know when it's done. So we went ahead and took a look at the T timer widget. So what it is is it's a predetermined timer for different kinds of teas. So you can create all sorts of actions within it. Next thing I wanna do is I wanna go ahead and do another shortcut and this is the tip calculator. 
something that we all use. You know, I know if you're anything like me, sometimes you can't figure out that 20% on the fly. Instead of dragging out your calculator, this, that, and the other, you can create a shortcut to calculate the 20% easy peasy super quick. Look for it located in your gallery, click on it, get shortcut, boom, added to the library. Super quick, come over to the library. There it is, we know it's there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna look up. Now we're gonna come back and we can see right there, it showed up. Let's have a little bit of fun. Calculate tip, what's the bill? Let's just call it $130.52. This was a really nice meal, 130 bucks. Now we hit okay and it asks us, how much are we gonna tip? Well, that's nice. $26.10, your total is $156.62. This is what I like, I don't have to do math. It's like, I gotta calculate the tip, and then I still gotta calculate the tip, plus the balance, plus the total. So this just makes it easy. I really, really like this feature. I'll be going out tonight with some friends and I'll be using this feature. So we went ahead and we finished adding the tip. Now we're gonna go ahead and um, let's let's just pretend Pretend for a second, I go to the gym. I went once, two weeks ago, I went once. But let's go ahead and go over to the gallery and let's search for elliptical. So let's go ahead and add a elliptical routine. So we're gonna go ahead and get to the shortcut and it's gonna connect it to my health app so all my health information will now be in there. So now if I go to the gym and I jump on the elliptical and I wanna go ahead and add it, Let's go ahead, what is the distance reported by this machine? But before we get in there, let me go ahead and do that. Let me go to the three dots, which is basically the settings button. And let me take a look at this. It says, question, right? Question, what's the distance? First thing it's gonna ask me is how far? Input number, question, how many minutes did you train? Input number, then the type of workout. Now here, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at this. Duration, minutes, distance, ask for, it's in inches. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to miles. So that way if I jump on the elliptical and I know how far I went by looking at the screen, I can log it. I can go ahead and I can hit done. Let's go ahead, let's go up, let's go to our widgets. Let's take a look at it. And it's gonna ask us, what's the distance reported by the machine? This is going to be in miles so let's go ahead and just put one mile okay how many minutes we're gonna say we did 30 minutes boom there we go it actually logged it now that information is gonna go into my health app now if you're anything like me you're a mama's boy I love my mom you love my mom maybe you're daddy's boy daddy's girl whatever maybe you just need help remembering your parents birthday so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to create a shortcut to tell us how many days until it's mom's birthday. So we're back to shortcuts, we're in our library, and now we're gonna go ahead and hit create shortcut. Now this is where it gets a little interesting. There's a lot of stuff going on here, but try to keep up. I made some instructions to help me move it along a little quicker, and I will definitely share those in the description if you wanna look it up and play for yourself. All right, we're gonna go ahead, create shortcut. We're going to search. We're just gonna select date, boom. So now we have a date. We're going to select current date as our starting point, which is right there, boom. It's beautiful, it's perfect. We're going to leave it alone. Now we're going to go to format. Date format, short, time format, short. We're gonna go ahead and put it to none because we don't need to know the time, it's a date. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're going to search for variable. Set variable. Boom, we have those three things there. Date, format, set variable. Now we're going to do select date. This is going to be a date again, but this date is not current date. This is going to be a specified date. So this specified date, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to put May 1st, 2019, mom's birthday. Now we're going to do format. So format date so we're gonna leave it short no time so now we come back over here again and we select variable now we pick pick between so get time between dates so we're telling it what's the time between this date and that date and that will gives us how many days until mom's birthday so now get 
time between dates right now in minutes, okay? We can do that. And now we're gonna go to show alert. There we go. So title, we, we can create our own, our own alerts. Now we've titled this days till mom's birthday and we're going to put mom's birthday is in time in between dates days we come over here we hit done and now it's untitled so let's go back over there let's go over here and let's rename this shortcut to mom's birthday now we're going to go back into here the settings and let's see if we can put a nice little celebration type of icon somewhere something that's fun and exciting. All right, we'll just put a cube there for mom's birthday. It's not really exciting, but it's something and we changed it up and you can also change the color of it. So there you go. A couple more settings done, done mom's birthday, put it there, come back over here. Now it's showing up under our widgets and let's see if it works. Wow, mom's birthday is in a lot of days. So that tells me something went a little wrong with mom's birthday. We had it set in minutes and we need to have it set in days. Now it says mom's birthday is in 111 days. This is pretty cool. This kind of gives you an idea of how you can do all sorts of fun things with Siri shortcuts. Let's come over here, create our own shortcut. We're gonna come down and go to apps. We're going to open an app and we're gonna open Twitter. Create a new tweet. So as you can see, when we open up the app, there's already kind of some shortcuts built in that you can use and select. We're gonna do create a new tweet. There we go. Easy peasy. Siri phrase. There we go. New tweet. So you can come over here and you can re-record it. New tweet. All right, so that is your Siri phrase to create a new tweet. We can go to our shortcuts through our widget menu again, and we can immediately create a new tweet, or we can go new tweet. Best. There we go. It immediately runs the shortcut, brings it up, and it makes it happen. Pretty cool, right? Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Siri shortcuts is an answer. And the question is, hey, Apple. Hey, Tim Cook. Hey, Johnny. Are you guys ever going to improve on Siri? Are you ever going to make it bigger? Are you ever going to make it better? Are you going to make it stronger, more intuitive? The answer is no. We're going to give you shortcuts that you can use with Siri. Now you can use shortcuts for all sorts of things. Using Siri with them to activate it is just another benefit. So I don't necessarily think that the shortcuts were made specifically for Siri, but using shortcuts with Siri can help Siri deliver a better user experience. But I don't know if that's what we all want. I think we want a better, stronger, more reliable, more intuitive, more interacting Siri. Sure, it's fun, nice little cheap tricks here and there and all sorts of stuff, but the Google Assistant really is a powerhouse that can help you do stuff. Not to mention the call screening that has been enlarged upon with the Google Assistant on the Google Pixel. And Google's also gonna be bringing us duplex sometime this year or maybe next year. And if that's real, if that's a thing, that's going to destroy Siri and Apple and Alexa are really gonna have something to worry about. Until then, the Google Assistant is still dominating the market when it comes to artificial intelligence, personal digital assistants. But if you can play around with your shortcuts, you can learn and you can teach your phone to do exactly what you want it to do when you want it to do it. So have some fun, play with the settings, dig into that library, dig into the gallery, and create some new shortcuts for yourself and get the most out of your phone. You paid for it. For the love of tech, thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, do so now. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated the video, give me a thumbs down. Either way, thanks for watching. Until next time, namaste.